In Creo Parametric, you can create an animation of an assembly using existing mechanism snapshots. Here I have an assembly for a wrist mechanism open. If you take a look at the model tree, you can see a bunch of glyphs indicating that we have components with mechanism connections, and we have a bunch of snapshots that are already set up. I can take a look at them by going to the drag components command. Let me expand snapshots over on the right. And here are some that are inherited from sub-assemblies. And then here are some that are already in the model. So some of them I like. So for example, let me double click on this one. We get this confirmation window. I will just click yes to get out of it. And so here's snapshot one. Let me take a look at two. There it's fully extended. And then three, four and some of the other different ones. And so I've taken a look at some of these and found the ones that I like and that I want to use in my animation. So let me close out of the drag dialog box. Then to get into animation mode, you can go to your applications tab. And then in the motion group, we have the animation command. If you have just about any license of Creo Parametric, you should have the DAO, the design animation option available to you for creating animations. In other videos, I've shown how to create new animations for explode states and importing from MDO and also from, oh, I haven't shown snapshots except for one for uh, creating a turntable animation. But anyhow, in this video, we're going to create one for a uh, using the snapshot. So I will click on that and here we can give it a name and I will call it, I don't know, extend retract and then click the OK button. And so here we have the new animation. There's a default animation for using explode states. I'm not going to use that at all. I could just go ahead and delete it if I don't want it. You'll also notice that the active animation, the one that I just created, has a little green star on it, indicating that this is the one that I'm currently working on. So you can have multiple animations in your model and you can edit them whenever you want. So anyhow, that now that I have this set up, first thing I'm going to do is set the time domain because I know that I want this to be a total of 20 seconds. So let me enter 20 as the time and I'll leave the default frame rate and the interval. Everything else is okay. Let me click the okay button to close the animation time domain dialog box. And you might notice that the domain domain here changed from 10 seconds to 20 seconds in length. Now I am ready to create my different keyframe sequences that I am going to use. And be aware that I already have existing snapshots, but you actually have the ability to create new snapshots when you are in the middle of design animation. So let me click on keyframe sequence to use my existing ones. Here is the name that it is suggesting to me for the keyframe sequence. I am fine with that. Here we have our reference rigid body. It is using the ground. And then we have a drop down list that allows us to select the different snapshots that we want to use. And I want to start with oh, a little tooltip was covering over the one that I wanted to select. I'm going to start with the one called one and have it at time zero. Then I will click the plus sign in order to add it in here. So that's good. And I want it to stay in that position for two seconds. And by the way, I can click on the glasses icon in order to preview it. Oh yeah, I was already in that position. Later, I'm going to add some different views at times so that the models and the orientation that I want. But anyhow, I want it to stay in this orientation of components, this snapshot without interpolating or changing between this one and the next one for a couple seconds. So let me enter in a time of two and hit the enter key. And let, no, let me hit two and then hit the plus sign. And now we have that going on for two seconds. 
Then the next one that I want to go to is actually going to be the one called three. I like that as an intermediate one. And here it's suggesting four seconds, which is what I want. So let me click on the plus sign. And so there we see a preview of it. Let me move it over a little bit. By the way, we have our interpolation options here. Right now for translation, it's going to be linear and rotation is linear. But you also have the options for smooth for translation and rotation as well. So then let's see. And then I want to go to that fully extended one, which is actually the snapshot called two. And let me hit the plus sign. And I want it to stay there for two seconds. So I'm going to hit the eight and then hit the plus. So again, it'll just freeze in that position. Then I want to go back to the one called three. So let me select it from the list and just give me 10 seconds, which is good. Let me hit the plus sign. Then I'm going to use some of the ones with a slightly different name. So let me go. Actually, no, let me go to the one called four. Just checking my notes here Four. Yeah, 12 seconds is good. Then let's go to the one called five. Hit the plus sign. And then the one called six. Just getting my tool tip out of the way. And then at the end, uh, I am going to go with back to the one called one. So let me go to, oh, come on, tool tip, get out of the way and hit the plus sign and let me type in 20 because i want it to freeze there in that position and there i have all the different ones that i want to have okay so this is good let me click on the okay button and if you take a look here we have the different the keyframe sequence with all of our different actions our different snapshots that are going to be implemented at those different times so that is good and just to have it move around like you would with an animation let's apply different views at different times and so i created a saved view called animation one and that's what i actually want at zero seconds so let me click on the apply button and i actually want it to stay this way for a while as it is going through the motions and then i'm not going to have it kick in until about 12 seconds. I'm going to choose animation four and access. I think I want that to kick in around, I don't know, 12 seconds. We'll see. I can always change it later on. So I will click on the apply button and then let's see, let's go with animation five. And I want that to be at Let's see, let's go with 14 seconds and hit the apply button. Then I have another view called six. And I want those to be, that's kicking at 16 seconds and hit the apply button. And then let me go back to animation one. And I have not taken a look at this, so we will see how it looks. But this is just, you know, gonna experiment with this one, see how it looks. And I'm happy with those different views at different times. And so now let's see how it looks. I'll hit the generate button and we can see that. Yep, there it's going. All right, so yeah, that was okay. I probably wanna go ahead and edit it some more, but you know, just to show you how you can create it, that will do. And now I could go back to, or I could go to the playback command and here we have the playbacks dialog box, which is almost exactly the same as the playback dialog box that you have in mechanism mode. And so we can use this to play the current result set. And right now in the bottom left, it was processing all the different times. Here we have our player that we can use to watch it. You can adjust the speed as you are viewing it to make it faster or slower. And I'll just let it run for the entire time.
and it is looping. Let me hit the stop button. Sorry, I got distracted and just kept on watching the animation go. Uh, yes, I hit the stop button over uh, in the middle of that set of tools. And so then at this point, I could use the capture button if I wanted to create a movie of this and be aware that you also have the ability to render the movie if you want to create something that is going to look very good. And here we have the MPEG option. You can also go with AVI. And some of these other ones are for image files instead of generating a movie file. But let me cancel out of there. So there you have it. That's how you can use your different snapshots in order to create an animation that interpolates from one snapshot to the next.